Would you like polka dots with your stingray? Hi, what's going on friends? My name is Brandon Ringstad and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness about our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. So I've been working on a commissioned art piece, that's why this video had to come out a week later. Thank you so much for your patience. Today we'll be discovering the Brazilian river waters of the Xingu River Ray. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Let's see if I can get this one right. Potamotrigon Leopoldi are a freshwater river ray. Potamos is Greek for river and trigon is Greek for stingray. I am guessing that a guy named Leopold discovered them. Either that or they misspelled leopard when entering the data. They are elasmobranchs, which are sharks and rays. Myliobatiformes, which are stingrays, and Potamotrigondidae, which are river rays. Where can we find the Jingu River Ray? We know that they are a river ray. And look at that, they must be found in the Jingu River. Thanks, common naming conventions. They can be found in the Jingu River Basin and Fresco River Basin in Brazil. They prefer slow moving water with sand, mud, or smooth rocky substrate, some vegetation, and rocks or logs. During the flood season, they will venture to the terrestrial zone and feed on cool things or explore. Sometimes they get stuck in a lake or pond when the water levels drop during the dry season. The clarity of the water changes throughout the season as well. Sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's white water, and sometimes it is black water. Remember that white water has suspended particles, and black water is clear but stained brown from tannins in plants. So, how am I going to portray this in this painting? I use the golden ratio to measure where on my canvas to place key points of focus. I need to create a cool composition to keep your attention. It keeps the eyes moving on the painting. As an artist, I want people looking at my art the longest. I use three steps when painting. I block in, model, and add detail. It is usually in that order. I use loose, thin brush strokes at first to block in colors and shapes. I model by setting in my textures, medium tones, and darks. Then I come in for the detail phase with my small brushes and add highlights. Up until my detail phase, I am using mixing white for color mixing. During detail phase, I can use titanium white sparingly. Let's move from geographic range and habitat to physical appearance and behavior. What are we looking for when identifying the Jingu River Ray or polka dot ray? We are looking for a stingray with a dark body and light yellow or white spots. Stingrays are built in a funny way. They are vertically compressed with a disc body, large pectoral fins that propel them through the water, long thin tail, gill opening and eyes on the dorsal surface, and mouth and gill slits on the ventral surface. The dorsal surface is dark brown or black with several light yellow to white spots. Their eyes are high on the head so that they can see. Stingrays have really good eyesight. On their ventral surface, they are light gray or cream colored. Since they are elasmobranchs, they have electrosensory organs called ampullae of Lorenzini near their mouth and nose. Yes, stingrays have a nose. It might not look like ours, but it still is able to detect smells. These electrosensory organs pick up tiny electrical signals given off by muscles. This helps them with finding hidden prey or predator avoidance. They know when something is coming. Their mouth has crushing plates that increase in mineral content as they age. This allows older stingrays to slurp up and crush animals with shells. They have pelvic fins tucked under their pectoral fins. Here we can determine the sex of the animal. Males have finger-like organs on the end of the pelvic fins called claspers. 
These claspers help with mating. Females don't have them. Females are typically larger than males. All Jingu River rays have long, thin tails with toxic barbs in the middle of the tail. These are sharp, hard points used in defense. Stingrays are typically soft-bodied and are easy prey from predators. This barb helps them defend themselves. Juvenile rays are at a higher risk of being eaten than large adults, so they have more toxins secreted onto the barb to deal more pain. How large do these stingrays get? Large adults can measure 24 inches in disc diameter and can be over 40 pounds. Have you ever touched a stingray? I have been able to touch a few stingray species and I love how they feel. They are soft and leathery. They don't feel like a shark at all. Sharks are smooth in one direction and spiky or rough in the other. I like them. Let's discover some behaviors. Stingrays will cover themselves in sand or mud during the day with only their eyes poking out. They are typically active during dusk or evening when the light levels are low. They can be seen moving around during the day, but they are most active during the night. When I was doing research, I got the feeling that stingrays are a little mischievous. They crawl or glide over anything and are like toddlers putting anything and everything into their mouth. Some aquariums have had the rays pull up plants and move decorations. If the plants aren't deeply rooted or the decorative log isn't fastened to the exhibit, the ray will move them around or destroy it. Basically, child-proof your tank if you have a stingray. Another funny behavior I read about was them traveling into forests during floods to eat fun things like snails, fruits, and bugs. This brings us to our next segment of the adventure. What do Jingu River rays eat and how are they doing? Typically, Jingu River rays eat small fish, invertebrates, and mollusks. The mollusks can range from clams, tube worms, and snails. As the ray ages, their dental plates get harder with the addition of minerals. This allows the ray to crush shells to get to the, uh, nutrients. How are the Jingu River rays doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as data deficient. The study was done in 2003. But studies are pretty hard to do since they are kind of remote and hard to get to. There is currently a ban on the capture of wild rays. If people want one, there are breeding programs for them. The Jingu River Ray are used in the aquarium trade. Apparently, they eat twice per day, and their taste in food is expensive. Other than that, we don't have a big relationship with the Ray. They aren't harmful to humans. Uh, we don't capture them. When walking in water that is home to stingrays, it is best to shuffle your feet or slide through the water. You might not be able to see a hiding ray, or you might step on it with and hurt its fins. You also want to be careful of their barbed tail. It hurts if they get you. Let's move to the last segment of the adventure. What was my personal encounter with the Jingu River Ray? I was in Arizona with a friend at the beginning of 2020. We went to the Odyssey in Scottsdale. I was in the Rivers of America section and saw this glorious spotted ray swimming and gliding over the sand towards me. I had to take a picture. I am used to spotted eagle rays and cow nose rays, but I have no idea what this is. I took three photos and just watched it sit there for a few minutes. I was hoping that it would move again, but it didn't. Then our encounter together was done. I walked away happy, wondering what animal I would see next. It is funny to me that a brief interaction with an animal can make such a lasting in memory. By this point in our adventure, I am onto my deep tail phase. I am using small brushes to add little details and textures. With the paint that I use, I use several layers to make the painting have a depth to it. You can see several layers all at once. I start mixing titanium white into my colors to bring out my highlights. I use pure titanium white sparingly. 
Here, I want the paint to stick off of the canvas just a little bit. I want it playing with the light from its surroundings. I want this painting to have a depth to it. I want to capture the wild feeling, like the, the ray is near some vegetation, swimming over logs, gliding over the sand as light lazily filters down through the water, causing a little mischief to the plants that decided to pop up in its way. This is the day in the life of the Jingu River Ray. There we have it. This painting is finished. What do you think? I think it's funny that I'm painting all these animals with spots on them. I like how this painting turned out. It's a little looser, it's a little more fun, has a little more character to it, but uh, overall I'm really pleased at how it turned out. If you would like to subscribe and ring the notification bell, it would really help this community grow. I do my best to post new content every other weekend. This month I am supporting the ALS Association. Every April I choose ALS Association to support because one of my friends passed away in April and it's my way of honoring her and remembering her. She was a wonderful artist and I actually got to be a part of her last painting. Her body wasn't working as well as it, she wanted it to and she had this idea for this wonderful tropical painting and I was able to finish that for her before she passed away. I'll leave links in the description so that you can donate. Did you know that portions of all of my sales goes towards charity. It's true. So each month I donate from what I made in the previous month. The better this community does, the more that I can help. It's a win-win. By helping me, you're helping charity and two local businesses. Now, why is it two local businesses? I use Feather and Fox Print Company on Whidbey Island as my print shop. So all of my prints that I have come through there. They're really high quality, G-Clay prints, they're wonderful people, I love working with them, and they're just, just such an amazing quality to them. So by helping me and this community, you're helping this channel, you're helping charity, and you're helping a local business. And I really appreciate that. So I offer my originals, limited edition prints, and unlimited edition prints. If you would like any of these, please let me know. Thank you so much for your support, spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.